chapter 47 lactose intolerance and genetics and this is specific training for the lactose sensor uh, meaning lactose intolerance you will find this test here this is where the lactose sensor is it's part of the gastrointestinal sensor and it's got two functions it doesn't actually help, uh, help you in in prevention because uh, there is no way to prevent getting the disorder uh, but it helps you in early detection as it takes around five years for a person to get the right diagnosis once the first symptoms arise and uh, improve treatment. Now, lactose intolerance is actually quite an interesting case of a genetic disease um, and let me explain to you why. If let's say a, uh, a baby in the stone age um, drinks lactose, drinks milk, it's mother's milk it cannot actually digest lactose itself in the way it is uh, ingested. It first needs to be split up into two smaller parts and for that the baby will need lact the lactase gene. And this gene produces an enzyme, enzyme is, is kind of like a scissors, that will split up lactose into two smaller sugars and that is glucose and galactose. So these are just two different kinds of sugars, they attach to each other and the enzyme just cuts it into smaller pieces. And these pieces can then be absorbed and used as energy source. So uh, the little cave baby can use lactose as a energy source um, from its mother's milk. Now, uh, nature is very, uh, very energy consuming. And uh, if we take a cow, for example, a cow will, as a baby, have access to milk, to its mother's milk. But it will not have access to milk once it is grown up, because cows don't have uh, access to milk when, uh, when they're adults. So nature has developed a, a system, or evolved a system, where a genetic element that turns off the lactase gene once the baby has become a few years older just because the, the, the body should conserve the energy of producing this enzyme because it's not required later on in life. And uh, so what happens as the cave baby grows up, it will no longer produce the enzyme. And that's usually not a problem because the caveman did not, uh, does not have access to milk anyhow. However, now we are in the modern age where we have uh, cow milk, or domesticated animal milk available to us in the fridge. And now what happens if we drink lactose? Uh, lactose is not broken down because we lack the enzyme. And then uh, bacteria use the lactose as an energy source. And they start to grow and they convert lactose in all sorts of acids and waste products. And these are the waste products that actually cause the problems, the digestive problems in lactose intolerance. So what happens in people with this gene or this genetic element is that they produce the enzyme at a high level for the first uh, up to six years and then the enzyme production starts to decline. It declines fast in some people, slower in other people and in one of six people the enzyme is gradually turned off and once you've reached this level here of mild, moderate or severe symptoms you're considered to be lactose intolerant. And now this is very different from one person to the next. Some people develop it at age 10, others at age 70. So there's a big variation. However, it's the same process in uh, most people that have this genetic variation. Now, there is a genetic mutation in this genetic element that is responsible for switching it off with increasing age. And this is a SNP. In case you don't know what a SNP is, SNP, uh, please do watch the, the general genetic uh, training that, that are also in a video that will explain to you how these things arise and uh, how they originate. So this SNP, this genetic variation, disables the turning off of the gene with increasing age. So what happens, even in adults, in adult cavemen, so to speak, um, the enzyme is still produced lactose if it is ingested can still be broken up and absorbed and in these people that's five out of six people the lactose enzyme is constantly produced lactase enzyme sorry so the question is if if this here is a mutation and this is the normal case why 
to only 20% have uh, have the, the normal case and 80% have the, uh, the mutation. And that's actually a very interesting story. It is estimated that around 10,000 years ago, in the north of Europe, humans have already uh, colonized Europe, and in the, in the region of around Sweden, a single mutation happened. So in one person, this genetic variation originated, and suddenly he was the very first person that was able to drink cow milk or domesticated animal milk and not have digestive problems. And he was the first person that was not lactose intolerant. And at that time, they already had domesticated animals. They could eat their meat, but uh, they could not drink the milk because of the digestive problems. Now, this was a very harsh time and lots of people died of famine. So they starved to death. And this one person had a huge advantage uh, against all of the others because he was the first person to have an additional food source, which was the milk of the domesticated animals. He or she, I have to say and he or she would then have children with the same genetic variation and they also have the advantage. So um, they started to repopulate Europe with this survival advantage compared to everybody else. And this was such a big advantage at this time that 80% of all Europeans are directly related to this one person. So this led to 80% of Europeans, people of European ancestry, to be lactose tolerant. They have inherited a mutation, while around 20% have not inherited them and they cannot drink milk. So this happened in Europe only. There are some other cases, uh, small cases, where something similar has happened, but it mostly happened in Europe. And the Europeans uh, were quite, uh, quite good in colonizing the rest of the world, so they have carried this lactose tolerance with them. But people with African ancestry, pure Asian ancestry or Native American ancestry, they are all lactose intolerant, uh, with some very few exceptions. So, and th there are a number of different forms of lactose intolerance. This type that I've just explained is primary lactose intolerance. It affects 20% uh, of people, so actually it's not really the genetic variation, but it's the normal case, as, as I've said. Uh, it affects around 20% of people with European ancestry and around 100% of people with African or Asian ancestry or Native American ancestry, and it occurs with increasing age. So when you have this genetic variant, it means that with a very high likelihood of uh, more than 95% that you will during the course of your life develop symptoms of lactose intolerance but it could happen that it's only at uh, age 80 it could happen that it's at age 10 so this is still very variable so primary lactose intolerance is the most common food intolerance and um, it uh, occurs with increasing age and there is secondary lactose intolerance and this happens due to either some diseases or some damage done to the intestine. So the intestine is just too damaged to digest lactose. This is usually not genetic uh, and it, we call it acquired lactose intolerance. So through some other factors it has been acquired during the course of the life. And then there is congenital lactose intolerance. That's a very rare uh, disorder. Um, that's actually a mutation in this lactase gene. So the gene is broken, it's inactive right from birth, and this is a very severe thing for babies. They need to immediately be switched to uh, milk without lactose. Um, as I said, it's very rare, and it occurs right after birth. And then there's milk protein allergy. This is actually the most common problem that babies have with milk. It's not actually lactose intolerance, it's got nothing to do with lactose. It's just some protein that the immune system recognizes and attacks as an invading uh, organism. So, if you are to recommend a lactose intolerance test to a person, it depends on what age they are in. If they are uh, older than, than the age of five, the most likely test or the most useful test would be lactose, the lactose sensor, where we do the genetic test for the genetic variation causing 
primary lactose intolerance. And um, the secondary lactose intolerance is, uh, is the acquired type. It's still very rare. And in this case, you can't do a genetic test because it's just acquired. It has developed throughout the life. And uh, there you would do a standard breath test. Basically, you can go to a hospital or a doctor doing that and you get a glass of lactose, you drink it, and then you, you measure the amount of hydrogen gas being produced because the, the bacteria in the intestine produce hydrogen gas. You also feel very ill, so that's, that's a drawback, but that's a way of, to measure this. But as I said, it's a very rare type of lactose intolerance. 99% um, of the time it will be primary lactose intolerance in adults that's causing symptoms. Then there's milk allergy. This is in theory uh, active throughout life, but mostly it's in babies. We can test it with the allergy sensor test that we have. It's not a genetic test, but we actually test for the antibodies against milk protein. So this is the most common problem in newborn babies under the age of five. And then there's the congenital lactose intolerance, which occurs right after birth. And this is included in the baby sensor genetic test. So we have a test for the baby sensor, allergy sensor uh, from one to five, and uh, the lactose sensor, which is the most common type um, with increasing age. And that's the end of chapter 47, the lactose, uh, lactose intolerance and genetics as specific training for the lactose sensor.